the gift of food. Windows opened where we put clothing in a box that was made by one of our Eagle Scouts. We call it our Union Mission Bin. Clothing that enhances the life of those here in our community. You see, all of these opportunities and more are open windows. They're open doors. They remind us that Jesus is central to us. They remind us that we have caught on fire and we have a vision for what God wants us to do and to become as the body of Jesus Christ. Every day, every single day, we make choices as individuals, Every day, every single day, we make choices as the body of Christ. Do we participate in that open door? Do we walk through that opportunity? Do we participate in that window of opportunity? Or don't we? Do we say, no thank you, not interested at this time? What's our decision going to be? Because every day we have this opportunity to say yes or to say no. I'd like to share with you a true story, a true business opportunity. Arthur's friend, Walter, picked him up one day and they drove about 25 miles out into the country. Arthur thought that he was somewhere in the boonies and he didn't know what Walter was thinking. Well, there in the middle of this large, uninhabited expanse of land, Walter started sharing his dream and his vision and what was going to be going on in this big piece of property with his friend Arthur. Walter wanted Arthur, Arthur to buy some land that was adjoining his land in order to handle the hotels and the restaurants that Walter thought that his dream would generate. Walter wanted his friend to be, be as excited as he was and he wanted to offer him an opportunity to get in on the ground floor. Arthur, Arthur thought this over and for him the logistics were just mind-boggling. He thought that his friend was crazy. He, he thought that there's no one that's going to drive out 25 miles to, to do what, what's going on here. But Arthur didn't want to disappoint his friend and he said, uh, let me think about it, Walter, and, and, and let, me, let me give it some thought. But Walter couldn't wait. Walter had to have a decision right then. So Art Linkletter turned down his friend, Walt Disney, and the opportunity to buy the land that would soon become Disneyland. Oh, a missed business opportunity, for sure. A door not walked through, for sure. A window closed, for sure. But how do we know when to say yes? I mean, all, all the time, opportunities come our way. When do we need to say yes, and when do we need to say no to these opportunities? In order to say yes to an opportunity, we must be willing to risk. We must be willing to trust and to know that we're able to go to God in prayer for this situation. Do you remember that woman in scripture that had been bleeding for 12 years? She dared to touch the hem of Jesus' garment as he walked by. And in that act, she was risking being ridiculed. She took a chance and she was healed forever. In contrast, do you remember that wealthy young man who desired eternal life and he came to Jesus and Jesus told him how to achieve it? Go and sell all your belongings and give that to the poor and then follow me and you will have this gift of eternal life. But the wealthy young man could not take that leap of faith and he had to walk away 
from that opportunity. You see, such occasions are never easy, whether we're the woman that's bleeding or whether we're the rich, rich young ruler. We don't know when to say yes, and we don't know when to, to walk away, for sure. We're very good at analyzing most of us. We can weigh the, the pros and the cons, and we can look at the possibilities, and we can do analysis, and we can look at the risks, and we can research, and we can pray, and we can go through all of that, and we can just kind of freeze ourselves and do nothing because we don't know what to do. Too much information. And by the time we do decide, the opportunity is no longer present. Those first disciples, they dared to follow Jesus. Somehow they dared to leave everything that was comfortable to them, everything that was known to them, to leave their families and to follow him. They risked being a disciple. Do you think we would dare leave behind something? Do you think we would dare to become uncomfortable? Do you think we would dare to, to do the unknown for a little? Do you think we would dare to follow in those disciples' footsteps? What do you suppose would happen if today at 2 o'clock our entire congregation went down to the dismal swamp and we walked for world hunger. Huh. What do you suppose would happen? Jesus in our lesson today is speaking about this narrow door. He's really talking about heaven. And he's telling us that we need to make every effort to enter that narrow door. Make every effort, Jesus is saying, in becoming a disciple, a follower of Christ. They observed that many people were there listening to Jesus preaching, and even more people were there when he would start healing. But then when the real ministry was there, when the real opportunities were there to continue to, to be in ministry, they noticed it was just a small number of loyal followers who were there to be in ministry with Christ. You see, the narrow door, it's still open for us today. The door is not yet closed and God is still encouraging us Become a big brother. Become a big sister. Become a foster parent. Help the hungry. Join a Sunday school class. Give sacrificially of your money. Give of your time. Volunteer over there at that schoolhouse. Oh, you know that idiot that's been cutting in and out of traffic in front of you all day long? Go ahead. And let him or her merge in front of you right now. Hmm. That hurts. <laughs> Opportunities. Choices. Each and every day are there before us. Do we say yes? Do we come, become bullheaded and stubborn and say, there's no way in heck you're going to get in front of me, buddy? The decision is ours each and every day. God gives us a chance to love each and every day. Do we trust him? Do we believe him? Are we willing to take that risk to follow Jesus? 
You see, in order to go through a narrow door, 